What's good guys, my name is Matt Baker, out of the San Francisco Bay Area, fighting out of Wooden Man Muay Thai. Got me into Muay Thai, was, I was kinda just like stagnant in life when I was younger, and uh, I was always into sports, so I wanted to do something. And then I had saw fighting on TV. There was a gym right next to my house. So I'm like, oh, let me go test it out. And then snowballed from there. I didn't even really understand what I was getting into. So I was a little naive to all of it. So I kind of just went in and jumped head first. It was a like jujitsu gym too, it was Caesar Gracie. So it was Nate and Nick and all them running around. So it was definitely like a hyphy environment. I think I fit right in. Yeah, you know what's funny is a lot of people these days, not back then, I was actually watching MMA. And I was like, oh yeah, what? And I'm like, oh, Nick and Nate Diaz. And I'm like, they're in the area. And then this gym is here. So I didn't really find out until I went and trained MMA. And then like at the time they were like, watch these videos, you know, to try and study up on fighting. And it was Muay Thai and kickboxing. I was like, this is way, <laughs> way better than like doing the jujitsu. I'm like, I want to kick people in the head and do that type of stuff. So it worked out perfect. Yeah. It was literally after my first training session, I went home and watched some tape. And I was like, ooh, like kickboxing and Muay Thai and all this stuff. I never really went to the Jiu Jitsu side. Naturally kind of connect to me more to be like kicking, punching, kneeing and doing that type of stuff rather than like rolling around. I'm like, nah, I'll fade to this side. So I just went straight in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was tough, man, it was tough. I like, I had someone holding pads and they were like, check the low kick and they would kick me in the leg, but I didn't know how to check. So I'm like, just getting bashed in the leg and it was, yeah, it was bad. It was old school too, you know, this was like 12, 13 years ago. So it was a lot different. I feel like back then, like they just beat me up as much as they could to see if I would come back. So luckily I kind of limped back in, but I remember it was real, real tough, tough class. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I was like, when I first started training, I was like a noodle. I was hella skinny. So I was like, you know, but I could notice my length and it started to work out. And then like, once I had my like first uh, like smoker kind of fight, like two weeks after I started training, I was like, oh, okay, I'm like taller than guys and I can use it to my advantage. So I kind of started to get the idea of it. Yeah, it was, it was nerve wracking for sure. Like at that time, I didn't know how to process my, my nerves and process how to go through the pre-fight stuff. So I was like, I was kind of just went into it. And then when I got there, I was like, oh, and I was kind of tripping about it. But it was, it was a funny one, like the guy, wouldn't do kickboxing because he noticed I was real tall. So he's like, oh, we can do a different rule set. So we ended up fighting like underground MMA and you could like punch to the head on the ground. It was nerve wracking, but uh, started the journey. And then I think like maybe three months later, I was in the amateurs. So pretty much right, right away, right away. Yeah, right away. Yeah, it kind of just came together. Like my whole life was uh, real serious in sports, you know, like very serious, like seven days a week playing like baseball, going traveling teams, doing all this stuff. So I kind of just like, I noticed when I got to my teenage years that I was like kind of just floundering and, and kind of like stagnant. And so I knew that, okay, I kind of messed up on my avenue to go to pro sports in the like baseball, football type avenue, right? So when I saw this fighting, I was like, it, it, I didn't really know anything different than to just keep going and going and going. I was kind of like naive and blind to just being like, let's just go. So they were like, oh, you want to fight? And I'm like, cool, no doubt. And it was just a little underground smoker thing like two weeks after I started training, yeah. 100%, yeah, that's a, that's a great point for sure. Like I even feel like that to this day. It's my dad's work ethic and the one that I built from sports help still helps me to this day. I feel like I look around all the time and you know, I'm not that type to like call anyone out, but to myself, I go, yeah, I'm, I'm out working everybody like, and I know it cause I've been to certain levels of fighting that I'm like, yeah, I know it. So it's, it's still helping me to this day for sure. After two, two amateur fights, I got picked to be on Team USA. I got flown to Russia and I fought in the IFMAs at the world. And when I seen and looked around, I started hearing about the fighters there. Artem Levin was there, Valentina Shevchenko was there, like all these Kem sits on Pinong was there, all these guys, I'm like, okay. Then it started to be like, oh, it's real. You know, I'm in crazy Russia with like everyone speaking different languages and I'm just from, you know, I'm mean, from the East Bay, just chilling. Like I had never traveled anywhere. So then I kind of started being like, shit. All right, we, we, you know, it's starting to real, real thing, you know? And you realize this is something no doubt and then you see that like world-class level of fighting and out there in the IFMA you know it it's like they'll dump people and knee them in the face after they dump them so I'm like seeing it firsthand rather than on video and I'm like 
God damn. And I'm seeing these guys just, world, Artem Levin just going in and smashing people. And I'm like, who's that guy? And then you start seeing, you're like, oh, okay. That's, I need to keep fighting. And this is the level I need to get to. So it really opened my eyes up. I feel like the IFMA and USMF and Team USA, it's opened my eyes in such a big way to be able to do that as an amateur multiple times. It was the best thing I ever could have done. It's kind of lit a fire and just help you go to that next level. Hundred percent. Yeah, it was the best thing that ever could have happened, no doubt. I would have done the exact same thing. I just know that when I was younger, I would have told myself like, when I was really early in my career, I was like, not, I didn't have that martial art body yet, right? Like I didn't have the strength of being able to recover and know my injuries a little bit better and know when I'm hurt or know when I'm injured. So I think that the only thing I would tell myself back then is like, just take oper every opportunity possible. But I would have done the same thing, exactly like I did in the pros, like I did in the amateurs, just go. You know what I mean? Don't think about it, just go for it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I have, uh, now I probably have close to 40 fights altogether. And I've fought in California three times, maybe. You know, it was real hard. But luckily, and, and it was hard for me too because when I came up as an amateur, like Johnny Davis was throwing a lot of shows and my first amateur win was a win and then he stopped throwing shows. And then it was like, there's nothing around. So my whole amateur career was tournaments. I did tournaments everywhere. WKA, USMTO, the WK Worlds, IFMAs, I did a bunch of tournaments to try and get fights. That's how I was able to rack up fights was tournaments because I couldn't get anyone to take single fights. That It just wouldn't, even to this day, I still can't really get too many people to take single fights. Gosh, it kind of, I feel like I just ran out of opponents, you know? And like it started getting too hard to find opponents. And then it was like, I fought for glory as an amateur. And then they hit us up like, oh yeah, you want to turn pro? And I was like, let's go. And it kind of just like, it was a smooth transition. I didn't really have to worry about anything. It was like, all right, I'm spending a lot of money having to fundraise, because amateur, you know, you have to fundraise it up to get to these tournaments. So I was like, ooh, they threw like, not tons, but they threw me a cool bag. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. It's on TV, I'm good. So yeah, it was a smooth transition. Watching people like Rob Common, and like all these guys back in the day, they were OG. Like when you start really looking into it, you're like, oh, they'll do long pant kickboxing. They'll do kickboxing rules. They'll do K1, they'll do Muay Thai. They'll do all these rule sets. And I always thought of that to like, I always thought just do everything, you know? I wanna box, I wanna do Muay Thai, I wanna do kickboxing, you know? I always said this when we were, when we were younger, our camp would say this, right? It's like, I'll box with the boxers, I'll kickbox with the kickboxers, I can do Muay Thai with the Muay Thai guys, and so I like to be well-rounded, and I'll give you the most opportunities. So I still try and do that to this day, like anything, everything, I'm cool with it. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, one of the big adjustments was uh, the clinch. Because when you go to kickboxing, you know, at least at least when I first started in glory, it was real like old K1 style. Right when you clinch, they go break. So that was different for me because I, I enjoy the clinch. I like elbows, I like to work that clinch. I like to break people down. So it was different to like not react to grab and elbow. It was like, okay, I have to high guard and more boxing. So there were some variations I had to tweak for my style to fit into K1 and kickboxing. The pace is the is the biggest difference, you know? It's like that kickboxing pace is like the bell rings and they're like, yeah, and just go. But Muay Thai, you know, you have five rounds and it's like a lot of people doing Muay Thai, they want to be smooth, they want to have their balance. Kickboxing, it's kind of like, if you're painting, you're just throwing paint at the wall, hoping something pops up. So it was, it took a couple to be able to have calmness in the chaos. Typical like Dutch fighter that's coming at me is like high guard, take it and just throw back. So to me, they're all like zombies. So I think my rhythm, my movement, allowing me to like use my Muay Thai ability, I can bring it into kickboxing. So that's what my experience has helped to be able to bring that into kickboxing. Some people would be like, you can't bring, and it's like, yeah, you can bring the different styles in. You just have to mesh them well. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think it's a huge advantage for me. Yeah. Look at every single weight class and tell me one person that has a world ranking kickboxing and is world ranking in Muay Thai. Me? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't really see no one else. I just got silver at the world's and I'm ranked number six in glory kickboxing. I don't see anyone doing it. Now, if I had my way, I'd name 10 people I could fight, but it's harder to get fights, but I really see that. I'm like, I, I try not to shout it out too much. I just, not that person. I, like I said, I keep my head down and then I'm like, cool, you wanna fight? Let's go, let's get it. But now I'm kind of like, yeah, I mean, look at it. I'm, I'm right here in world Muay Thai. Give me anyone in Muay Thai from 85 to 200. I'll go up and wait and fight anybody. Same in kickboxing. and. 
I don't, I don't see a lot of other people doing that, you know what I mean? It's like uh, the best of both worlds. I have real good technique, but I have that switch and that switch comes and I can be real, uh, you know, real savage with it, you know what I mean? It's like my boy says like Sav from the Av, you know, like we can, we'll all get down for sure, but I have that technical style as well where I can kind of switch it on, switch it off. So you don't know if I'm gonna be coming in in your face throwing bombs or if I'm gonna be making you miss and sleep you with a neck kick. You just don't know what's gonna come, but I'm able to kind of mesh those styles well. So I think that's unique. I've been training full time with Jong Snom probably about two and a half years now, but I've been, getting technique and tips from him and going to take some of his classes or do sparring classes for almost 12 years now, I think. It's been a long time. You know, I'm not that old, I'm only 31, right? But it's crazy to come to this point and recently in the last two years, I feel like I've, I've grown so much and he's opened my eyes to a lot of things that I think I haven't been open to see. So yeah, it's been unique, man. It's it's crazy every day too. It's like Nunxiam and Johnson are coaching me right now. It's still crazy, but the benefits I've seen are insane. I just hope to be able to show it in fights, you know, and stay busy because we've been working a lot and it's up my game by like 30, you know what I mean? At least, yeah. I mean, it's not to be like cliche or whatever, but for sure Muay Thai saved my life, no doubt. Like, yeah, there was just a period there in my teenage years where I really fell off, you know, and I just wasn't making smart decisions. I was having bad things happen where I think it, it would have been a real hard road for me. And I think, you know, just with some of my friends having issues, getting locked up or doing gang stuff or whatever it was I think it would have been a real hard road so it's it's been a lifesaver for me and it's made me a lot better of a person I had a lot of like demons and stuff I was battling younger you know and I feel like now I've been able to uh, learn how to work my mental side and I think I did that through Muay Thai and being able to like, you know, exert myself out, but then able to have the humbleness and be able to be around these type of people and kind of feed off of them and learn things and develop yourself. And it's really just saved my whole life for sure. I mean, for sure, Johnson and Nunxiam have been huge. Like I watch a lot of their fights and like, even some of the members or like some of the fight team would be like, Jesus, cause I like kind of go crazy on it sometimes watching back their fights and talking about it and stuff. Um, for me also, I was heavier, you know, like I've always been bigger and heavier. So Muay Thai connected with me because I love Muay Thai, but also I watched a lot of K1 kickboxing. So I watched a lot of K1. So it's like a mix between like watching tons of Nunxiam, tons of Johnson on, tons of like couple good Thai fighters, you know, that I liked. I like crazy styles. I like clean styles. You know, I like Ponsonne crazy style, you know, clean style. I like, you know, Sam A's legit. I like all these guys. But for me, a lot of it was K1 as well. I watched the K1, Ernesto, uh, Daniel Gita. I was a huge fan of Daniel Gita. I liked uh, Alexei Ignashov, I really liked. And they kind of have that like calm Muay Thai style as well. It's not this like crazy brawling, like Ramon Decker style, which I love as well. But uh, so it was a mix between them. It was Muay Thai and old school K1 because I just, I was a bigger dude, so I, I saw it better. I'm like, watching these 118 pounders didn't make as much sense as watching the open weight guys, and I go, oh, I'm 6'5", oh, I'm 6'6", six, six. like I see these guys, so it was a mix between the two. <sighs> when I started, I think I was just trying not to make dumb decisions, you know? And I was kind of just flying by the seat of my pants, I wasn't really thinking too much. Now, I see, the goals that are there that I think I can achieve, you know? And I think I can achieve a bunch of them. I think I can achieve being the best Muay Thai fighter at 85 to 200 in the world. I think I can achieve getting the glory belt. I think all these are achievements. Now, outside looking at, you know, other people looking from the outside, they could say certain things, but I see me and I'm like, I can beat this guy, this guy. I look at him and I see, I know I can beat him. So the goal for me really is, keep at it, you know? I kinda, like I said, I keep my head down and you know, people ask me like, oh, what's the future look like, this and that, and I'm like, to be honest, I'm just like, I'm hustling with it. I'm doing as much as I can, fighting as many people as I can. I feel like that's just what, where I'm at right now. So my goals are just to keep winning fights, keep getting belts, keep improving myself as a person. You know, now that I've been with Johnson on, I'm able also to see like, the like business side and the teaching side and understand that role as well, which helps out because it helps me with my basics. It's helped me teach other people. It allows me to open my brain to new ideas and different things. So yeah, I think the goals are just 
keep hustling, man, take over the world in kickboxing and Muay Thai, and then uh, just keep soaking in the game from people around me, you know? I don't know, it's hard. I wish I could change something that would give, give me more fights, give me people to take more fights, but I don't know. I don't know if that's me yelling louder. I, I mean, honestly, thinking back, I don't think I'd change anything, you know? I just now know moving forward, I gotta be a little bit louder, you know? I gotta be a little bit louder and let people know what time it is, man. I'm trying to fight everybody at any weight, whatever, it's all good, but um, the past is a past. I, I think I did decent at it, learning from it. I'm world class, you know what I mean? I've been at this game for a long time, long time. And like I said, I'm exciting fighter. I throw big techniques. I'm mostly the higher weight guys are brawlers and then they slow down. That's not me, I'll go for days. I got cardio forever. I can be technical, I can make you miss, I can be slippery but I can walk you down and beat you down. So it's like, it's the best of both worlds for me. And if you want me on your card, I feel like you'll get some recognition from it. And you know, I'm, I'm here to stay and I've been at this game for a long time at a high level. And I think that that will show in all my fights, all my opportunities, everything, you know? You give me a chance and you'll see what time it is. Like, I'll be sleeping some people for sure, you know? The thing I like most about Muay Thai is how it's helped me like develop as a person. I mean, that's all I could say really is like Muay Thai has just helped every facet of my life, you know, if it's personal, professional, whatever it is. So I just enjoy the benefits I have from it and I enjoy doing something I love every day and for my life, you know? It's been a huge blessing for me, I think. Yeah, I mean, mainly Instagram. I'd say Instagram, Matt Baker USA. I'm on Twitter a little bit too. I need to get better. I don't really tweet too much, but uh, Instagram, I think as well, like that's a good one. I'm starting up a vlog coming up again. I do the American kickboxer vlog, more behind the scenes and more comfortable look. Yeah, a little personal, you know, it's better behind the scenes stuff. So I think it would be my vlog that's on YouTube too as well. And then my Instagram's big. Yeah, Matt Baker USA. I'd say that's the best way to connect and see what time it is and see what I'm doing. What to do guys, thank you for listening to my story. You can catch me at Wooden Man Muay Thai in San Francisco or on Instagram at Matt Baker USA. Hell yeah. A lightning bolt that can I poke from cloud to cloud When I hit the library, my style is in the rap files I like to shake dice up 